By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and it is a Friday so that means we are going to continue with magic from the Raging Bull series, the old school tournament and we have reached round number six of this tournament, the last match in the Swiss series before we head over to the top eight and we've selected quite a match for you. We are going to see Ola, a player from Norway with his Artifact Berserk deck facing David, a player from the Netherlands uh, playing with a Sarah Geddon deck. Now, before we go to the actual match, we are first going to do a deck tech. Like always, I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these decks. And an Artifact Berserk deck, man, that is really sweet to see. Um, before, I just want to mention that if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. Click on or check the description below and then click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech, starting with the deck of Ola Artifact Berserk. And here we see the deck Artifact Berserk by Ola. And, um, well, you can probably imagine why it's called Artifact Berserk. There are four Berserks in here, and there are a lot of artifacts in here. It's as simple as that. I mean, how cool would it be? And, and it's, it's very probable uh, if Olaf can kind of like double Berserk a Juggernaut and win the game. That would be kind of cool. Uh, in interesting include here, by the way, are the three Mazes of If and also three Abyss. So he's got a lot of defense. I think those Maces of If, he wants to use it um, to kind of save his Juggernaut as well. So it's not purely defensive. It's also kind of a way to save his Juggernauts from dying, I think. Uh, because remember, Juggernaut has to attack every turn, which is not always favorable. But with Mace of If, you can simply take it out of combat and it deals no damage, but it also doesn't receive any damage. Another interesting card here for me is Sword of the Ages. This is um, an artifact from Legends. It's 60 cast, um, and I believe it comes into play tapped. And then what you can do, you can, uh, once it untaps, you can tap it, and you can sacrifice X amount of creatures, and they are removed from the game, and the sword is also removed from the game. But then what happens is you deal damage to any char target equal to the power of all the creatures that you've sacrificed together. So, for example, if he wants to sacrifice two Juggernauts and a Suchi, he is dealing 14 damage. He can also use... Berserk, of course, because then it doubles in power. So that's really the kind of play that I like. What if he would play a Berserk on a Juggernaut, swing in for 10 trample damage, after that uses Swords of the Ages to deal an extra 10 damage? I mean, that would be <laughs> that would be insane. So looking forward to see those pl uh, plays. Then, of course, we see the regular uh, power cards. This deck is fully powered, which is qu quite insane. Uh, you know, we see those two black guests um, appearing here as well. Diamond Valley, interesting include. So we saw Diamond Valley in round five. We're seeing it now in round six. I believe Diamond Valley is seeing more and more play for the simple reason is that it can buy you time. And in this deck, it also has a really nice synergy with Sylvan Library. I mean, Sylvan Library for life to draw an extra card. So basically the Diamond Valley can draw cards for you in an indirect way. Um, interesting sideboard as well, by the way, with uh, two Nevenerals discs crumbles to have some uh, some artifact hate there and uh, we also see um, oh this is interesting by the way he's playing with uh, Surrender Pafrit and Urnum Jin so maybe he feels like if his opponent is going to board in a lot of artifact hate he can bring in those big Arabian Knight beaters so this is the deck of Ola from Oslo Norway very interesting brew looking forward to see this uh, deck in action let's take a look at the deck of his opponent David with Sarah Geddon and this is the deck that is going to take on the Artifact Berserk Brew. This is Sarah Geddon, uh, piloted by David from the Netherlands. So let's take a look. This is more of, it's not an Urnum Geddon, which is kind of the deck that uh, a lot of people are familiar with. A very good brew. And the interesting thing is here that uh, probably David has had too many uh, bad moments with Sydney in a Bottle, or actually he's playing two Sydney in a Bottles himself. Uh, so he has decided to go with Sarah Angels instead. I think it's very interesting and a very creative move. Obviously, one of the issues with that Armageddon and Sarah Angel situation is that Armageddon is four to cast, Sarah is five to cast. So you don't have that nice flow. That being said, who cares? I mean, Sarah Angel is very strong. Um, playing with too much Arabian Night, you can get really, really punished by City in a Bottle. So I kind of li like this take of David who says, you know what, I'm gonna switch it around. I'm gonna make my negative into a positive. I'm gonna play with Sarah Angels instead of Urnum Gents. And you know what, I'm gonna play main board city in a bottle. Now we just saw the sideboard of the Artifact Berserk deck and it's full of Arabian Nights. So chances here that we'll see a game one 
with City in a bottle, of course, because it's main board, but maybe in game two, Daffodil will board it out, and then maybe Ola will board in his Arabian Night creatures. Like, that would be, that would be interesting to see. Of course, for, for David, I hope that doesn't happen because that would turn out, turn out really bad for him. Um, if we take a look at the rest of his deck, you know, you've got the Llanowar Elves and the Birds of Paradise, so eight mana dorks, so he really wants to ramp up quickly, really wants to get into that Sarah Angel situation. Um, he's also playing with uh, Argovian Pixies. Now, these Argovian Pixies, they are fantastic in this matchup because um, all the damage dealt to Argovian Pixies by artifacts is reduced to zero. So one Argovian Pixies can block those Juggernauts, can block those Suchis. Two of them can kill those creatures. So I think Argovian um, Pixies, maybe it's going to be the VIP of this matchup. I mean, we'll have to see. And of course, we see the white control package for Swords, for Disenchants and the Balance. Personally, I always like... I, I do understand that David is not doing it because he's playing with three Armageddons, but I also always like it when you play three swords and one Wrath, just because you don't see Wrath that much and it can be so powerful when you're behind. That being said, in this in this deck, I completely understand uh, the choice of David because you're playing with Armageddon and Armageddon and Wrath of God, that doesn't really mix well. Um, in his sideboard, by the way, we also see an extra Preacher, so that's going to be interesting. And we see um, two Whirling Dervish, and those two Whirling Dervish are going to be a very interesting include because um, Ola, his opponent, is playing uh, with the Abyss. So he's probably going to board those in uh, in the second game, so it's going to be interesting to see. And perhaps uh, David will also board in Tranquilities as extra Enchantment Hate just to deal with those Abysses. And so that he can concentrate his disenchants on all those artifacts um, that uh, that Ola is playing with. Okay, so this is the deck of David, Sarah, Gennon. I, I think this can be a very, very interesting matchup. Let's go to the games. And we are about to start with game number one. So as you uh, may notice, I haven't fast forwarded these matches. Usually I go on double speed. Um, but the main reason why I chose not to do this, you can see that uh, Ola avatar there in the corner of the screen. And uh, if I would fast forward at times two, it would be like Ola is headbanging all the time. So that would be kind of a weird situation. So Ola, I don't know if you're watching this. I don't want to do that to you. I mean, this is, I think, your first time here on Timmy Talks. I don't want to uh, show you as a headbanger. The other reason is that actually these players, they play pretty quickly. So it, it doesn't really slow down the match that much. They play quickly, they're good players, um, uh, they're quick players. So let's take a look. Both players have taken their hand. It's Ola with the Artifact Berserk deck sitting on the left with the uh, Lightning Bolt playmat. And we've got David with the Knights of Thorn playmat sitting on the right. Um, the Knights of Thorn, the oldest old school tournament in the Netherlands. And uh, let's see, I'm, I'm not sure who's on the play here. I think Ola is deciding to keep, and I think David is not sure yet. So he's going through, he's a little bit in the tank here, going through his cards. And you can see Ola there waiting on David here to make a decision. It looks like he's going to keep, and there we go. We're off to the races. There is a forest into a soul ring. This is a good start here from David. Probably with eight mana dorks and a soul ring, you just want to have a turn one play. But look at this, Mishra's Workshop. And there is a Mox Sapphire, four lands. That's probably going to mean a Suchi or a Juggernaut. And there is a Juggernaut turn one. This is exactly what Ola wants to do here. Early pressure. And David is under pressure. And there is... This is hard to see, though. What card is that? Um, I don't think it's an Argovian Pixies. But we'll just have to see. I mean, it's going to attack now with the Juggernaut and, and based on the block, we can... Actually, it is an Argovian Pixies. Yes, it is. Sorry, I didn't recognize that. The Argovian Pixies 2-1 from the Antiquities. Remember, any artifact damage dealt to this creature is reduced to zero. So this is the perfect block for David. But what is really concerning for David here is that he didn't play a second land. And there we see a Chaos Orb from Ola. And is he going to activate it? Probably on the Pixies, because for him the Pixies is a huge, huge problem. So he's going to use the uh, Mishra's Workshop as his target. He's going to stand up here. And oh, he's missing the flip. And we can see David here cheering. He's like, okay, I'm still in the game. I'm still in this one. Because now he can block it, taking zero damage instead of five. And hopefully he can find a land here. 
And I think for the game, it's good that he missed a flip, but it's always sour. And there's another Argovian Pixie. So two damage in here for David with one of the Pixies. And he's got the other Pixie to block here. And uh, this is difficult for Ola. Of course, when you're playing uh, with blue and with green, removal is always kind of an issue. You don't have red, you don't have bolts, uh, you don't have your swords from white. So it's, it's a little bit more tricky to get rid of creatures. And there we see a Suchi hitting the board and a time walk so he's going to take a turn here so at least he can deal some damage because that one argovian pixies is tapped first he's going to draw for turn let's see what he's going to do next and he has got so much mana because of that mishra's workshop now remember you can only tap the workshop to cast artifacts attacking now for nine uh, able to block one i guess taking four damage going down to 16 and there we see a maze of if and he's tapping more. What is he going to play? A Sword of the Ages. Oh, I like this. Such a cool card, Sword of the Ages. Um, I've got an Italian playset myself. Very budget-friendly playset. Uh, and I've been kind of tinkering around with it. Uh, very cool card. Very cool card indeed. That means next turn, actually, he can, he can sack and deal 9 damage just with the Sword of the Ages alone. Um, but, of course, 9 damage is not going to kill... David, so I don't think he's going to do that. And David is not finding any land. That is tough. So in a way, he's lucky with those Argovian Pixies and with the missed flip. But he's also very unlucky because he's not finding any land. And that's probably why he had to think so long to decide, am I going to take a mole or not? Probably decided not to based on the soul ring uh, in his hand. So he's blocking both here. At least that means zero, zero damage for him. And look at that. Probably the Ola is just going to keep playing on big creatures. Oh, there's an Abyss! Oh, this is brutal. This is brutal. I think this this might be the end for David. He really needs a white source to get a disenchant in, or at least something. He needs a land. Okay, there's a land. There's a white source. Can he do anything against the abyss? But it's oh, I mean, the abyss already has done his job by by killing one of the two pixies actually. But uh, let's see if David can do anything back here. Tapping here, one white and two. Casting Disenchant and Disenchanting the Abyss. Yeah, so choosing to keep his Pixies alive. I think that's a good a good choice. I mean, he's now on... He's still on 16. And he's playing a Regrowth over the Disenchant. Very good move. So next turn he can get rid of another creature. But of course, Ola uh, in response can always sack his sword and deal some damage. Remember that he can do that instant speed. He's probably first gonna attack and deal four damage here. And that is exactly what's, uh, what's happening. So David is dropping to 12. Remember, he can use the sword for nine extra damage. And if Ola can cast another creature, tapping five. Ooh, Clockwork Avian. It's really cool you're playing with Clockwork Avian, by the way, Ola. And now he can use his sword and uh, he can win the game. Let's see if he's gonna do that. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to activate the sword and win the game. How cool is this? Winning the game on a sword of the ages. Ola, man. Really, man. Great, 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 great. I mean, this for me as, a, as an old school player, it's just great to see these cards being decisive in old school magic. I mean, it's 2020, um, you know, and, and, and sword of the ages is back and is alive Really, really great, great victory here for Ola. And of course, David, you were very unlucky not finding any lands. But remember, this is just game one. So let's let these players sideboard. And then in game number two, we'll see uh, what's going to happen next. I expect to see some whirling dervishes from David. Game number two. And it's probably David who chose to be on the play here because he's got eight mana dorks. So he wants to play quick. And I really wonder what he boarded in. I wonder what Ola boarded in. If Ola is going to stick to his artifact creature plan after seeing those Argovian Pixies, or is he going to switch to his Arabian Knight package? He, of course, he didn't see the city in the bottle. And then the question is, is David still running the city in the bottle? Anyway, we see a soaring here from Ola. That's a good start. And a single planes here from David, which is not great, of course, when you're playing four Lanawer Elves. At least we see a Savannah here and, and four Birds of Paradise. There we see the first Birds of Paradise. You know, I think his whole deck screams play mana dork turn one and we didn't see that from david at least he has one now it means next turn he's got four mana available and there we see ola with an island and with a mox jet 
And let's see, what can he do next? And exactly, he's boarded in his Arabian Night Creatures. Ay, 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 I wonder what David is thinking right now. Uh, I think we see the hand of his uh, of his daughter there. Or son, actually, David. I, I, I forgot, do you have a son or a daughter? Maybe you can, you can let us know, sorry. Uh, but we do see here the surrender of Freed from Ola. And that means that, you know, he's probably taken out his juggernauts and his suchis. And he's playing with Urnims and Surrendips. And there we see a Spirit Link. That is pretty nice. A Spirit Link on the Surrendip Efreet. So that's good news here for David. And uh, he boarded that in from his sideboard. So that's pretty good. And if later in the game he manages to play a Preacher, he can actually take over that creature. And he's got a nice Life Link creature on his side of the board. Well, actually, it's not technically Life Link, but you, you know what I mean. So let's see what Ola is going to do. Tapping four here, and he's playing in the abyss. Okay, so he's deciding, you know what? I, I don't want to give you life. And there's a disenchant by David, and that means that he's saving his own Birds of Paradise, which is good news, because remember, his deck is called Saragen, and guess what? He's got five land. Will we see a Sarah Angel here? We will not. We see a Chaos Orb instead. But things are looking much better for David now than they did in, uh, in game one where he was just constantly with his back against the wall and, and his Argovian Pixies had to keep him alive. There we see Amishra's workshop by Ola and just the amount of land that Ola already has, it just, wow, it's baffling. And there we see the 4-4 uh, the four, four flyer, the Clockwork Avian. Of course, he kept that in because it's got flying, so it doesn't really care about those Argovian Pixies. I really like seeing cards like Clockwork Avian being played. Remember, David is getting a life each turn and Ola is losing a life every turn. And it's going to be interesting to see if David is going to flip um, on the um, Clockwork Avian. Of course, he doesn't have to right now. He can just wait. But it's just going to be interesting to see. And he's taking his life and just passing turn. Ah, that's not great here. If you sit still, you're probably moving backwards, so that's not good for David here. Um, he already lost his first game. He needs to win this one to get a third game in. Let's see what Ola can do. Even more land for him. And uh, he's going to swing in, of course, with the Clockwork Avian. And are we now going to see... No, he's just deciding to take the damage. I mean, that makes sense. Remember, David's gaining a life every turn. He's got enough life now. It's kind of hard to see on the dice there, but I'm sure it's close to 20. So nothing to worry about. As a matter of fact, I think it's 19, looking at it closely. And there's another Abyss. And these Abysses, man, they're just so strong. They're so important here for all the strategy. Remember, you're not playing with white. You're not playing with bolts. The Abyss is his creature removal. It's so important for him. And is he going to use his Chaos Orb on the Abyss? And probably David's also thinking, okay, wait a minute. He knows I've got the orb out, so does he want me to flip on the abyss? And then he plays something else, but what could he play? So this is probably all going through his head right now, and he's trying to decide on end step, because you know you don't want to wait for your turn to begin with flipping, because then you lose your own birds. So he's actually deciding to lose his birds. He wants to keep his chaos orb, he wants to keep control. Probably going to think, you know what, I'm just going to wait until I find something stronger, like for example a Sarah, and then it's worth to use the orb on the Abyss. Or maybe I can just find a Disenchant. And let's see. He's tapping two here. Is that for a Disenchant already? I mean, I do recognize this, that sometimes you're playing, and of course Disenchant is a strong card, but when your opponent is simply having too many targets for the Disenchant, it kind of loses its power because it's still a one-for-one -one trade. And there's a balance. Oh, I like this play. This is interesting. So that means that um, I believe Ola is going to lose a lot of lands here. Uh, or a lot, but a few. Actually, none. Oh, but there's a mana drain. <laughs> oh, because they both have three lands. They just got a lot. Oh, no, Ola's got four lands. But anyway, it doesn't matter anymore because we saw that mana drain from Ola. So he's choosing to kind of save his creatures. And now we understand that decision from David to kind of feed his birds to the abyss. That makes absolute sense now. But what is David going to do now? Now that the 
balance hasn't resolved. And I mean, the Artifact Berserk deck is cool, but don't underestimate it. It is a super mean deck. It's got it's got the full power nine. It's playing with Abyss. Uh, you know, you see it here. It's playing with Mana Drains. It's it's playing with Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Like it's not it's not a friendly deck. It's not a weak deck at all. Uh, the cool part of the deck, in my opinion, is of course the Berserks and the Artifacts and the, that sort of the Ages and this Clockwork Avian. Those cards are just really really cool and flavorful to see. And of course, combining that with the Abyss. That is pretty cool. Um, attacking here, so that's taking more damage. Again, he's kind of, um, yeah, he's kind of with his back against the wall slowly again, like not yet, but it's he's getting there. Uh, look at that, he's actually gonna swing in for two here. And we see a response from Ola. Um, what is he going to do? We see a Psy, Psy Blast here, Psionic Blast on the Mishra's factory and that's kind of tough here for David because he's already pretty low on land and he loses now his land number four and um, you can probably see on the Clockwork Avian every time you attack with the Avian it loses a plus one plus oh counter and in your upkeep you can choose to recharge your Clockwork Avian but here's the catch you have to tap the Clockwork Avian so I mean that's probably why you don't see a lot of players play with the Clockwork Avian if it would just be a 4-4 flyer for five generic mana everybody would play it but um, because of that downside not everybody does because it, it, it takes a whole turn to recharge and look at that Ola is just going in fully for this that means it's now an 04 flyer and um, because he's probably going to take out take off that counter pretty soon and there is a Suchi 44 Suchi and there goes the counter so he's got an 04 flyer now and that means next turn he's probably going to recharge it but remember he has that Suchi on the board, we do see David here with a land. So I'm curious to see if you know David can do something back here. I think he first needs to deal with that abyss. Let's say, like for example, he's got a Sarah in hand and he's going to draw into land number five. Then what he wants to do is end step of Ola. He wants to flip on that abyss. But I'm sure he's also thinking, okay, what if Ola? Okay, that's exactly what he's doing now. He's going to probably flip here on the abyss. Let's see if he can hit. And yeah, it's a hit. And it's actually on the Suchi. Interesting. So he's choosing a different direction. Very interesting choice here. He's really just thinking, I'm going to draw into another disenchant. I just first need to stay alive. Of course, we don't see David's hand. So it's always hard. Oh, there we see the reason for this. A Tranquility coming in from the sideboard. I wonder if he boarded in both of the Tranquilities. And that is a great decision here from David. And uh, there is a Lanawer Elf, the 1-1 one, one Mana Dork. Uh, at least it's a blocker. Um, not for now. And not for the Avian because it got flying. Remem remember, the Avian is now an 0-4 flyer, so he's probably going to tap it. And you can already see Ola paying mana for it, so he's going to see what can I use. Remember, he cannot use his Mishra's Workshop because he can only use that mana to cast. So this is actually a pretty heavy tax for Ola here. And here you can really see the downside of the Clockwork Avian. He lost four mana just to put four counters back on his already on his 4-4 flyer. And he's also lost his flyer for a full turn. Playing a Mishra's Factory and just passing turns is giving David a chance here. And you know, I really I'm I'm kind of rooting for David because I'm hoping for a third game. So hopefully he can he can find land number five and, and get a Sarah out or something. And tapping two here, and there's a disenchant, probably on the Clockwork Avian, and this is really nice from David, because Ola had to invest all that mana into his Avian, and now David is saying, you know what, thank you for wasting that entire turn recharging your Avian, here's a disenchant, you know, um, and if you're Ola, that's not what you want to see. But at least, at least, I guess, that's the way I always think when I'm playing with an Artifact Heavy deck, hey, at least, at least I got rid of a disenchant. Tapping five here, what are we gonna see? There is a Juggernaut, and that is a very good creature And uh, at this board state. Five, three, has to attack every turn. And he's animating his factory, and he's gonna attack, probably thinking that David will not get rid of the factory because there's a bigger threat on the table in the form of the Juggernaut. And he's probably right. I mean, of, of course, I don't see his hand, but I would probably just take this two damage. Let's see what's going to happen. He is in the tank, so he is thinking about it. 
there are just too many targets. I really like that that tranquility, but also with the tranquility, the only real reason you board it in is against the abyss, so it's still a one for one. And there is actually a swords, but it's on the juggernaut instead. So that means five life here from Ola going to 19. And I believe David, I'm kind of pinching with my eyes here to see those mini dice. I think he's on 12. And uh, attacking here with the elf, kind of indicating I don't want to trade the elf next turn. Uh, I don't want to use it as a jumper. And of course you don't because he's got an Argovian Pixies. And can Ola find another Abyss? Because that's his only way to get rid of the Pixies. And interesting, interesting second game. And uh, first game was great too, by the way. Uh, we see Mox Jack getting tapped. Four lands getting tapped. And another Abyss. Ah, this is unfortunate for David. At least he's got some creatures to sack next turn so he's probably gonna sack his lana or i guess or just are its birds perhaps yeah birds could be one i don't know let me know in the comments below what would you choose the bird or the lana and why and i mean this makes sense as well of course the bird can make white mana as well on the other hand david already has enough white but then again with bird it's got flying so it's got evasion so you can block everything He's actually attacking now. Interesting. That means it's kind of opening it up for Ola to attack with his Mishra's factory. And look at that. Tapping his workshop. And there is a Suchi. And there is a quick response. Another sorts to Plausiers from David. And interesting here. We didn't see an attack by Ola with the, uh, with the Mishra's factory. So I find it quite interesting. And David is still in this game, but uh, next turn he has to give up his Argovian Pixies. And then I think, oh, then I think it's going to be really, really tough for, for David. And he's quite unlucky facing all those abysses. Oh, and a mind twist. Oh my, do you see that? He's actually losing a Savannah and a Sarah Angel. And I think this is the nail in the coffin. Attacking here is going to drop to 10. Now he's got to sack his own Pixies. Ay, 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 ay. And able to play at least the Sylvan Library, but of course Sylvan is not that good when you're under pressure because you want to draw into extra cards, but it's going to cost you four life. He's not going to do that, but at least it'll help him dig, hopefully for an answer. And... What is he going to do? Is he animating? Yeah, he's animating it. Attacking with a 2-2 assembly worker. So that means David is dropping to 8 life here. And I think what this game really demonstrates is that, um, of course, white has great removal spells. The best probably in old school with the disenchants and swords. But it's always a one-for-one. One. So what you see what Ola does, he just keeps playing out uh, threats. And, you know, no matter how many disenchants you have or swords you have, if you every time play out a new threat, then it doesn't really matter that much. At least we see a good creature here for David in the form of a Mishra's Factory. Now remember, if he activates it now and wants to block it, he cannot pump it himself because of summoning sickness. Okay, forget what I said, It's because <laughs> there's a strip mine here by Ola. It looks like he's got all the answers here, um, and he's going to bring David up to four, and there's a Berserk. That means he's going to two, and then he's probably got a side blast, and that's it. Psionic blast. That's it. Oh man. Oh man. <coughs> oh man. Ola. Uh, well done. Well done. Two to zero, and um, you are the winner of this match. Uh, well done, Ola. Very good game, and uh, you can see him smiling there. He's he's very happy. I, I have to say, Ola, I enjoyed uh, looking at your deck, and also David, I enjoyed looking at your deck, choosing to go with Sarah Angels instead of Urnum Gins and playing to City in the Bottles main board. It didn't really pay off against this opponent, but I'm sure later in the tournament uh, it probably did. And here we see once again the uh, deck picture of the deck of Ola. Uh, it's really a cool deck. Uh, maybe, you know what, let's also let's have another look at the deck picture of David because it's, it's a beautiful deck 
as well. Anyway, uh, Ola and David, thank you for sharing your game with us right here on Timmy Talks. This was the episode for this Friday. If you like this tournament, the Raging Bull series, stick around, you know, because next week, Friday, we've got the first top eight match and we've got the top eight, the semifinals and the finals. We've got all the matches for you every Friday. I'll post a new one right here on Timmy Talks. And if you want to support the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, share this on your socials. Let me know what you think of the decks, what kind of decks you're currently brewing. I'm always interested to hear from you. And you can also become a sponsor of the show. You can support Timmy Talks financially. How can you do that? You can become a patron. There's an info card popping up right now. Click on the card. That'll take you to Timmy Talks Patreon page. And you can see all the wonderful things and ways of how you can support Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Talking about the patrons, let's go and take a look at our fantastic, wonderful, amazing patrons. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Think it is somebody can